Well, good morning, everybody, uh, and uh, thank you again for uh, a very warm welcome. Uh, can I just do a quick check? Um, I did a session yesterday talking about HR trends. Can I just see a show of hands who was in the session yesterday? Oh, great. Well, you came back. Thank you very much. That's very lovely of you. Thank you. So uh, I'm going to cover that, that, a little of that briefly again, just to explain the uh, context. Um, but by way of an introduction, my name's Mark Judd. Um, I'm the VP of Product Strategy for uh, Workday. And I'm going to be talking about what we're doing in Workday to address the key trends. And I'm joined by uh, Janka Petrovicova from our uh, Czech office, who uh, is one of our data engineers. Some of you may have spe seen Janka speak yesterday. And we're going to explain what we're doing in the whole world of data engineering as part of the, uh, the, the today's presentation. Everything that we're going to be talking about is future-facing statements. And because we're listed uh, in the US, uh, I'm I would uh, be obliged to uh, tell you that everything that we're talking about is uh, future-facing. Any investment decisions or purchasing decisions you, you decide to make should be based on the product as it is today. So I'm going to just, in a moment, I'm just going to explain a, a little bit about Workday. But before I do that, can I just see a show of hands? Who's flown on? an aeroplane in the last 18 months? Pretty much everybody. OK. Well, um, I, uh, I spent 11 years as head of uh, shared services at Rolls-Royce. Rolls-Royce is an uh, aerospace company. Uh, it's commonly misconstrued that it's a car company. And most, most of the time, people say, did, did I get a really nice company car? But the car companies owned by BMW is separate. The aerospace company employs 55,000 employees in 46 countries. And amongst many of its products, it makes the jet airplane, uh, jet airplane engine, rather. So when you went on your uh, plane, I would expect your journey went a little bit like this, that you spent a frustrating half an hour queuing to get onto the air airplane, looking at the person three ahead going, did they push in just now? And then you went through, you got on, you had to wait while everyone put their bags up and put their coats down. You finally got to sit down. If you're lucky, maybe they were bringing around a drink and some, some nuts. So you're going, I'll make sure I get mine. Are they going to forget me? I want my drink and I want my bag of nuts. And then the person, as you take off, slips their seat back ever so gradually until it's right up there in your, in your face. And you're going, oh, well, I'm not going to have much of a comfortable journey here. Then the food comes round and it's a bit cold. And have they still got the chicken? And then you try the, uh, the in-flight entertainment if it's got it. And, Perhaps it doesn't work as well as you'd like. Is that the kind of experience that you've had flying on a plane? Yeah. Well, about two meters away, there's a gas turbine jet engine. And it's producing 30,000 uh, pounds of thrust. It's operating at temperatures, the metal of it, uh, at temperatures that exceed its own melting point as metal. And it's. Uh, it's uh, performing at uh, minus 30 degrees at 30,000 feet in the air. And it does so for either the one or five or 10 hours that you're in flight. And it doesn't fail. And you land and you get off the plane. You haven't thought about it at all. You go and collect your bags and you move on. But everything in that engine is engineered to work in the same way. It's connected up. It's thought through from the, the smallest component to the hydraulic flows, to the big fan blades that are on there. And there's a real virtue that if you're going to build something, you engineer it. You build it to work together in a seamless way so that it can continually operate effectively. And that concept is the basis of by which Workday first originated. So Workday started in 2005. The founders of Workday had previously been the founders of PeopleSoft. And you may be aware of PeopleSoft as a former product. They, uh, PeopleSoft was bought uh, in an acquisition, and it left the, uh, the, the founders to think again, to start with a blank piece of paper. And from that, they wanted to think very differently about the experiences of HR and finance technology for the future. And they took their uh, uh, inspiration not from the traditional world of HR technology, but from what they were seeing happening in the world of consumer technology, from Google, from Apple, from Facebook, and from Amazon. And they decided to build a product that would create the same level of 
capability in the use of machine learning and user experience, but focus it on the concept of financial management, human capital management, analytics, and planning, underpinned by a single concept called the power of one. That means everything's built in the same environment. No acquisitions to buy new technology and plug it in. No integrations built in there. One single concept of data that can be utilized. Now, this is really quite key because that data concept, a single concept around business process and security model, is what formulates the architecture of Workday today. And what come important was I talk about the things we're looking to do. But the other thing is a strong community. And uh, I, I asked somebody what uh, Indaba translated, being from the UK, I, I didn't know what it meant. And I was told it means gathering. Well, community gathering is the ethos by which we hit, listen to our customers. So right now, we have 2,800 customers across the world. And collectively, they have 44 million employees in the Workday systems today. And the Workday system learns from the amount of information, the data that we're producing, allowing us to improve it continually. So we are growing very rapidly and utilizing that to increase our exponential growth. So yesterday when I spoke about trends, I identified several of the key trends that we see as Workday in our uh, liaisons with customers, with analysts, etc., to uh, determine what it is that successful outcomes are required from HR leadership uh, in, the, in the world of work today. And the trends include a, a very significant change in the definition of work and workforce. So redefining what we're looking for, we're not necessarily removing or negating the existing workforce, but we're seeing a significant extension. New types of worker and new places of work. The expectation of how the business and the employees work together is, uh, is a message that we're getting loud and clear. And the message also is that skills need to be constantly uh, evaluated, refreshed, and considered. Because there's a real focus now that as businesses cleanse their data, they're looking to optimize the new data source of skill definition to drive success in their business. The third is uh, the enablement of the individual, to take control of how to acquire, develop, and progress those skills, but in a way that's more consumer-based, to manage their personal experiences, and not to have to do learning over here or performance management over there, not to have separate systems to find a mentor or to connect to a new network. And that idea of connectedness extends beyond career enablement into a broader concept of a unified experience, but one that's designed for the, for the individual, that's about me, that's contextualized in the same way that a lot of consumer products are. When I go onto Netflix now, it suggests the films I want to see. Netflix is one of our customers. So in that context, I want to see the HR intervention, solutions, information, knowledge that's relevant to me. And the other thing we hear from our customers is the need for agile planning and capability. So the, the opportunity to think ahead and concurrently plan, not to take the information out into a separate meeting and to have arguments about whether the data is correct, but to do the planning on a real-time basis and to have the power of machine learning to make recommendations and also the ability to do org restructuring in scenario planning. And data needs to be insightful. As the more we get a data into single systems, like the cloud-based technology that Workday offers, the more our customers are saying, we want to surface the insights. We don't want to produce thousands of reports and thousands of dashboards and look at them and try and work out what's going on. We want that information to be brought to us. How can the power of artificial intelligence do that? We also want to make sure there's a lot more efficiency in the way that transactions work, that we're using automation processes to reduce time it takes, to reduce the amount of manpower it takes to do things that shouldn't need manpower intervention. And we also want to make sure that the more information we put into our technology, that we're comfortable and safe that it's going to be done in the right way and looked after in the right way. Many of our customers talk about the importance of engaging with their business to employee experience, well-being, uh, diversity management, but also extending into the community as a whole, to going into the whole area of social enterprise, looking at environment factors, brand contribution to the success of the broader community that those businesses are based in. And finally, there's a desire that innovation has to be built into the design of the product. It can't be a one-off purchase. Many of our customers now aren't buying 
Workday as a product, they're buying it as a strategy. And they're looking for Workday to constantly use the latest technology to, and constantly update, refresh, and improve that technology on an ongoing basis. Just on the word of innovation, it, it may be worth saying that innovation is a huge passion for us as a company. In the Forbes 2018 Top Innovators Survey, uh, con conducted on a uh, global scale, of the te top 10 innov most innovative organizations, Workday came second. And that's hugely uh, a great accolade for our organization. But what was really interesting that, and more of a, uh, an accolade for us is that of the top 10, eight of those most innovative co co uh, companies were Workday customers. They'd selected Workday because they could see the innovation strength of the Workday organization. The other thing we hear from HR people is that this concept of an HR life cycle, going from planning to hiring to sourcing to moving of inf uh, capability around to developing and performing capability and then rewarding and retain it, we've always understood that. But HR has derived its structures from historical multipoints, so learning teams moving into training, recruitment teams moving into the whole area of talent acquisition, etc. And those individual teams have designed pr processes, used different factors for selection, and they've also bought different technologies in the past, creating a complex weave of infrastructure in which the uh, organization needs to navigate. So we're proposing that actually by the use of machine learning, by a common experience, unified experience, and by augmented analytics, we can create a very different dynamic in that world. And I'm going to start with the concept of skills. I mentioned skills as the currency being quite key. Last in the last 12 months, Workday has launched something called a skills cloud in its own product. So our customers were saying, look, we've cleansed the data. We've got all the organizational information in the way that we want it to be. But what we're really keen to do now is to manage this new concept of a skills framework on an ongoing basis. So we want, we try to do this ourselves, but trying to manage a skills framework is hugely complex. And we ourselves looked at the data within Workday from our customer, and there were 200 million data points related to skills in there. Now, that's a, a lot to try and manage. But when we think about the fact that within a few years, skills are constantly refreshing, on an ongoing basis, it becomes hugely difficult. So we have created, within the Workday environment, something called the Skills Cloud. And that's a complete list of 55,000 skills that we will manage on behalf of all our customers. And that means that they don't need to. Now, there may be some areas where customers go, well, there's some unique skills we need. Those can be added by those customers to their own uh, tenant environments, and they'll be able to include those skills in the whole process. And over time, when we see those skills emerging, we'll be putting those into the collective cloud as well. But this becomes really important because as a data set, we're no longer looking, talking about recruitment skills or skills that we might look at in learning or skills that we might look at in career progression. All of them are the same set. Now, you can imagine if you went into a, uh, a drop-down list of 55,000 skills, it's not going to be used very much. And we really do need individuals to start indicating what skills they have and what skills they aspire to have. So this is where the power of machine learning comes in. And what we've done with the machine learning is we've started to look for uh, synergies between skills, families of skills and relationships between skills. We're creating something called a skills graph. And we use that among, among multiple processes. But it doesn't just stop there, because not only can we look at data points of skill to skill, but we can look at data points between skill and other forms of information held in the workday environment. Length of service, location, tenure, grade, salary, etc. So we can start comparing skills information to other information and broadening out the idea of a skills graph into a broader knowledge graph. Now, that becomes extremely important as we talk about moving forward with the designs of moving people and aspiring people. So I'm going to go through this, um, this life cycle now. I'm going to start with uh, planning. So as I mentioned, I think when I talk to HR professionals, their experience around planning forms a very similar story. It may differ to an extent, but it goes something like this, that every so often in the annual cycle, there's the need to do a piece of strategic workforce planning, group of MI experts are pulled together, multiple data sources, pull together a PowerPoint presentation of what the plan might look like, go to a senior level engagement session, put the information and the data down, the chief finance officer goes, I've got a different number to you. 
And then the chief of operations goes, we sold that business last month. Why is it still showing on the, on the org charts? And the challenge becomes very difficult because the, data, the discussion is then about data. Planning has to be built into the real-time activity. And the units of measurement need to be consistently understood. So using the skills cloud that we've mentioned, we're now enabling, in the future, we're going to be enabling uh, our business leaders to define when they're moving into new markets or new geographies, what skills that they need to have. Now, that isn't that difficult for business specialists to define the skills that they need. What they don't necessarily know is what skills are available to them in their organization, what skills could be available if training and uh, development programs were enacted, or where they may need to go through other processes such as design, uh, acquisition strategies, buy businesses, or a look at JVs and partnerships. So with this process, we've created a, a collaborating environment that allows business HR to work in the same environment looking at real-time data around skills and to be able to scenario plan future potential opportunities around do-buy analysis based on the skills for moving into new product areas, markets, geographies, etc. The other thing is that we, uh, we find is that many organizations want to do organization planning. So having defined the strategic workforce plan, the next thing is how are we actually going to create that environment. So we've just launched an org planning tool. Now, there are org planning tools in the market, but I've experienced those as a practitioner myself. The challenge that you have with them, and some of them are very good indeed, is that you have to lift the information out of your core data system at a single point in time, put it into a separate data system, and go through restructuring planning uh, operations activities. Now, that could be hugely challenging because they're not only emotive, and very uh, difficult processes to, to manage restructuring of a business, but that you're then dealing with two different technologies. And when you come to put that information back into your core system, the question about who said what at what time becomes a challenge, and it's very difficult to make sure that you've got everything uh, in that whole process of transformation as you want it. So we've now built all of that in the workday environment. It never has to leave. You can do multiple scenario planning, drag and drop around all different types of organization uh, types, in time, we'll have to create the ability for that information to be prepared in PowerPoint-style uh, work charts that can be shared in discussions with um, your business leadership. And all that information can now be put back into the Workday system once the decision's been made for the approved organization. Moving on from org design, we're then into the process of sourcing capability. So we're continually developing further uh, innovations around recruitment. We've got a unified recruitment hub now that represents everything to our sourcing leaders. And we're using machine learning to look at candidate pools to prioritize candidates that have applied based on the skills they have, the same skill sets that are in the strategic workforce plan that I mentioned before. And define those skills in terms of top priorities or close, close matches for the, the sourcing uh, the sourcing managers and also the line managers. But we can also extend that further and start to look at candidate pools and say, we noticed that you applied to us six months ago. You weren't right for the opportunity then, but since then we've defined new opportunities and we can see a skills match and we're alerting you to the fact that we think this new opportunity could be a good match for you. Would you be interested in uh, registering your, in your, uh, yourself for this particular opportunity? So we're using the machine learning, the skills in that same context. We're moving into the organization now, and we're talking about uh, develop to perform. We're constantly looking at new ways. Now, I, I started back in the, in the late 1980s, and one of the first jobs I was given was to redesign a performance, me uh, performance uh, measurement process. And I remember having the conversations of saying, this is about reward, or is it about development? And the, the guy I was replacing, who was retiring, said, I, I've, I've never worked that out. And I think if you in your career manage to work that out, you're a better person than I am. In that particular uh, process design, we were looking at five points on an appraisal scheme versus four, how many boxes we're going to have, whether we had cascade goals. And for most of my career, that whole debate hasn't really changed that much. Still looking at mid-year reviews, still looking at annual appraisals. But in the last two to three years, that whole debate is completely changed. And increasingly now, our customers are saying, we've got to move away from that archaic process of performance management. It's got to be real time. It's got to be enabled by the individual. It's got to be much more connected and using technology to connect people up to provide feedback. It's got to also uh, look at the fact that we're structured in different ways and we may have teams that need recognition. 
So increasingly now we're adding new capabilities. We've got the ability to do team feedback. We're also looking at ways in which there's a dialogue uh, recorder between employee and manager uh, that can be kept up to date on an ongoing basis called check-ins. We're utilizing the ability to provide feedback in workspaces outside the workday environment. So as you're working in other areas, you can uh, request feedback, uh, request the workday uh, assistant to, uh, to, to appear, and then you can give feedback to groups of people. We're using surveys as well. And surveys are really powerful. We do this within Workday, so every Friday we have something called Feedback Friday, and we provide two questions to every employee. We have an 86% response rate, and those two questions are a set of questions based on best place to work. And they're aggregated up over a, a quarter into the entire survey set. So we have an ongoing basis. We no longer do employee engagement surveys in a completely abstract way. It's done as part of the inline process of engagement with employees, and that information is passed to line managers uh, uh, real time once that survey is completed on the Friday. And they can then see the information that their employees are saying and act on that in order to improve the environment they're working in. And finally, we've launched a Workday Assistant. I'll mention more about this a bit later, uh, but the Workday Assistant is a, a conversational interface between uh, employee and the technology and allows uh, dialogue to occur. It's not a traditional search tool, but a, a very mature chatbot capability. I mentioned about skills, and we are often have conversations about skills versus uh, competencies. So increasingly, what we're really keen to do is encourage people to suggest the skills that they've got. And then we have conversations with our customers where they say, well, that's great, but we want to know how strong the skill capability is. And the more business process we put behind that, verification checks, business process activity uh, authorizations, the less agile the whole identification of skills becomes. Now, we may need to still do some of those, and I'll talk about verification later on. But what we've decided to do as well is to use machine learning to mine into a whole series of data that's held in the workday environment, job history feedback, uh, career history training that people have been on, uh, learning courses that people have undertaken, and produce a profile of relative strength for each of the skills they've got, moving much closer to competencies and starting to suggest not only the skills people have, but the relative strength of those. Now, you know what the relative strengths are of an individual. You know what skills they've got. You can also provide, through machine learning, the opportunity to suggest ways in which they can enhance their skills through development. But the question that many of our customers ask is, how do we get people to suggest uh, identify the skills they've got. You can go into Workday now and as an employee list the skills you've got and Workday will suggest additional skills that you might have. It's a very easy process to go through. But what's the payback to the individual to invest their time to do that? So we developed this concept called the talent marketplace. And this is really changing the concept of moving people around within the organizations. Typically we see two types of models for moving people. Internal recruitment which emulates external recruitment, where people apply for roles, uh, they go through a selection process, they get a job offer, etc. Or there's the movement of people through deployment activity, depending on the nature of the business. Some of it could be quite formalized, say technology firms or professional services firms. On other occasions, there's a kind of informal process of moving people to perform on projects or uh, to, to join communities of practice. There may be even social networking that exists. Well, the marketplace is an idea to cover all of those requirements. So an org within the organization, uh, a person who has an opportunity, it could be a new role, it could be a, a network, it could be a request for collaboration, uh, it could be seeking a mentor group, uh, it could be any of these things, it doesn't matter. They can identify what that opportunity is, and the data they, sit, they, they use to uh, formulate the nature of that opportunity is the skills from the skills cloud. So if they can create a new opportunity, and they can identify immediately from that opportunity who's got the requisite skills. And not only that, what skills gaps exist amongst the population they're looking for, where they're located, and whether they've expressed an interest. That's real time, because that's happening immediately within the same environment. And the employees can then get notified. So they can see what opportunities are there, and the notification goes to the employee and say, there's a new opportunity that's just come up. Actually, it's, it's the machine learning puts that in the priority order on the, their, uh, their personal development screen, saying, these are opportunities you might like to, to get involved with. This is a, an area of interest for you. It could be um, a digital 
marketing of something that you expressed an interest in. We're setting up a group of uh, people who want to establish a community of practice in digital marketing or gamification. Would you be interested in joining that? So this is creating a much more dynamic movement of skills and capabilities. And with the use of collaborative working, these new organizations and flexible organizations can be established very rapidly. And that comes on to the question of career enablement. Uh, I was listening to uh, Chiliwe Ross and uh, Viola uh, Singh from, uh, from um, AdCorp earlier on, and from uh, uh, Chiliwe from uh, Old Mutual, listening to the conversations they were having with, uh, uh, with us at Workday about what's important in terms of uh, employee experience. And one of the things that came out from that session was the need to enable employees' personal career development. So we're bringing all the attributes together in a single career coach, career hub environment. Performance management, learning pathways, learning programs, mentor suggestions, uh, peer-to-peer -peer learning, the, the uh, talent marketplace I mentioned, structuring it around the context of the individual. Because we know a lot about the individual. We, we have all that information that's held on them. And we can represent to them in a very consumable way what it is that's going to help them drive their success stories for the future. And with the learning as well, we're looking at consumer-based learning in the same way that you'd uh, consume technology. And increasingly now, and, and Michael Cook mentioned this in his keynote speech yesterday, increasingly now the way of scaling up education is by looking at new technologies such as video and peer-to-peer uh, -peer engagement. We're providing that in a way that makes it very uh, accessible. We're working, we have partners now uh, who uh, have learning content embedded in Workday that can be made available to customers so it's real-time uh, available and can be incorporated into the whole experience. And finally on rewards to retain, just a couple of things on this, but the whole area of compensation management uh, is an area that we uh, provide services to to our customers to do global performance and p compensation management on a massive scale in a very short space of time, utilizing the information there. Many of our customers say, well, that's great, but we now need to look at things like external benchmarking data as well, particularly in the comp area, looking at uh, the expertise that's brought to bear from external uh, compensation benchmarking. So we're bringing that compensation benchmarking inside the workday on, on the basis of required subscription by the, uh, the companies that want to use it, but actually embedding that data in the profiles of individual to make that whole pro process of compensation equality uh, and visibility much more connected. So I'm going to now talk about some of the underlying uh, factors that, that are helping us. And I'm going to ask my uh, colleague Janka to, to uh, give us an insight now on what we're doing in the whole process of data engineering. Thank you. So as Mark mentioned, one of the challenges that customers are facing today, it's growing complexity, huge amount of data, and the way how to get critical insight out of them. The one way how to approach it is augmented analytics. Workday was working on developing an application called Workday People Analytics that utilizes this engine based on augmented analytics, uh, analytics within HCM space, and is exclusively developed for organizations leaders, HR business partners, and executives. The initial content covers organization composition, hiring, retention, um, diversity, and talent and performance. Augmented analytics scans through all of the underlying data, eliminates all unnecessary noise, and surfaces only what really matters. Different people in the company wants to see different results due to security or responsibilities. So artificial intelligence predicts where the specific people can have the greatest impact. The example here uh, in Jessica, artificial intelligence predicts that she can make the greatest impact by focusing on average time to fill position in Cairo for data scientists. So engine localize exactly where the problem in the company occurs and how big it is. Further details to the main story are provided. We can see that the candidate count uh, went down and also uh, offer acceptance rate is declining. It's mainly relevant for recruiter Susan James and happening uh, in data science lead. So Jessica knows exactly where to focus on and how to act. Each story has own life cycle and feedback, so we are able to improve personalized results in the future. 
So how does it work? How are we able to get rid of all the junk and surface only one relevant story? When you think about the work of data analyst, uh, going through all the data, slicing and dicing, it's pretty repetitive. So we try to mimic the way how the data analysts work and what he has in mind when defining what really matters. At the beginning, he simply asked the question. Our engine can be configured to capture the most interesting business insights. After that, patterns are applied. The patterns can be outliers, anomalies, or trends. So the example would be, what are the me most important trends in our headcount? Or where are we struggling to hire? The important part of the question is where. Where is not linked to any geographical location, but where in the company do we have the biggest problem with hiring? After patterns are detected, there are many duplicates in the data. Because in traditional reports, you have tens or hundreds of manifestations. A drop in the headcount is visible in South Africa, but also in Johannesburg, uh, certain job profile, gender, or tenure. So we are applying graph analytics that is creating a relationship among each individual stories and enable us to detect causality. So afterwards, we are able to surface one relevant story, the real source of the problem. This is optimized by machine learning in order to surface top personalized insights. Ultimately, we have added natural language generation, so the consumption of the story becomes more, di more digestible. So we are surfacing not only the number, but the sentence that is describing the out outcome and is more understandable for people. Workday People Analytics is just first step on the journey. We are extending the content and covering, for example, cost of workforce or skills. Furthermore, we are applying the augmented analytics in the area of financial analytics. So how does Workday utilize its own data for the benefit uh, of the customers? We have the platform uh, around 2,800 uh, customers and with 40 million employees. We are working on the capability of benchmarking so our customers can compare themselves to their peers and to know where they stand within the industry. I just want to talk about uh, the unified experience now. Um, and a number of uh, our customers, again, have, and, and again, I hear it consistently as we engage uh, with prospects, customers, etc. is this need to have this contextualized, unified experience in the same way that we would see in the consumer market. So we've been developing an entirely different approach of engaging business to employee. The first of those is the launch of the Workday Assistant, which is uh, due in the work, it, we're already using it within the Workday environment and a number of early adopters. It's due in the main Workday product uh, in the next couple of months. And that will allow a conversation to occur between uh, employee and the Workday system. So it's not a search tool, but it's actually a dialogue using natural language processing. So how much am I paid? How much money do I get? You know, when will I be paid? They will all trigger and learn from uh, the natural language that's used a response. But it's also using the Workday security model. So I'd like to see the pay uh, levels for everyone in my team. It will know it's you. It will know what security, and it will surface that information and make recommendations to you of additional information that you may need to see. So this is an entirely new way of engaging. And that goes hand in hand with a broader concept, which is surfacing the information that's going to be most relevant. We were launching something we called the People Experience, which is an entirely new user uh, interface. And the People Experience creates the opportunity for personalized new home pages, utilizing Workday data, but also data that sits outside work data, external information that might be relevant to a particular moment that matters, or a pathway of activity like a, a new joiner that looks to order a, a piece of equipment or access uh, security passes, etc. Creating those journeys and allowing those journeys to be matured and developed uh, through the learning again that the individual uh, goes through as they impart on those journeys. And accessing multiple knowledge bases, both inside the workday environment, but externally, policies, procedures, guides, assistance, etc. And also with the support of the conversational services. And it surfaces in the forms of cards, relevant information that can then be explored and uh, adjusted. 
So I'm going to just show you what that looks like uh, in a short video. Well, this is really great music, but it's not the music that goes with the video. <laughs> your homepage so you can dive right I think we can we start again guys so people experience brings your work life together in one place it's your springboard to get things done pick the essential cards you need Pin, dismiss, and customize. Personalize your homepage so you can dive right into your workday. Jump into tasks and get work done. Tap into resources and knowledge so you can connect, collaborate, and share ideas. Get engaged and informed through targeted content. This means getting the information you need when you need it. When you know who to work with, everyone in your business works best. Connections help you share skills and insights, connecting you globally. Collaborate with others, easily share ideas and knowledge. Contribute to company objectives and track progress. Receive curated content and guided support during key moments that matter. in your people's experience because your people deserve the best. And there's one more thing I'd like to share with you before I'm uh, going to open. Hello? Yeah. Um, this week in uh, Orlando is our uh, North American conference. We have another conference occurring in uh, November the 12th, starting November the 12th in Milan for Europe, Middle East and Africa. And we share in those conferences well, a lot of our new innovations that are coming out. So we're announcing this week uh, about Workday credentialing. And it's an entirely new concept. Actually, this is the uh, equivalent of a personalized wallet for employees. So looking at the database of 44 million employees that we've got, creating using blockchain personal verifiable data that the employee can carry around and use in order to share with prospective employers. Um, we're working with credit companies, we're working with uh, academic institutions, so qualifications, and also employers themselves can verify information and data as well, allowing individuals to share that information at their request but uh, as they move around uh, the, the internal organization as well as the external world. So, as the Bitcoin wallet controls your currency, this is a skills wallet that will allow every employee to control their personal skills. And we see this as a huge innovation to reducing the time to fill uh, the new types of labor that we talked about at the beginning. Flexible labor, perhaps partners, crowdsourced activities can have verifiable qualifications that can be instantly approved and recognized. So there's more that's coming on this, but this is a, a, a new innovation which we think will revolutionize uh, the whole area of talent acquisition and skills movement. And with that, I'm going to open the floor to any questions. Yes. Uh, should we see if we can get you a mic? Is there a handheld mic? Uh... OK. I won't forget you. What to? Yes. Sorry for that. Um, seeking permission to remain seated. Um, you refer a lot. Oh, sorry. My name is Tami Liboho. I'm from <laughs> Avis Budget, Southern Hello, Africa. Uh, good morning to all of you. Um, you refer a lot to retrieving information, and most of the time is live. Um, the, the question is actually based on if, if you look into the human capital space, most of the data that we draw out of whatever systems that we use, it's 
dependent on S at 31 November or S at 30 October. What would be the um, the the lock the lockout period in terms of feeding the the system so that it can reflect as a um, the recent information? So the the information that's contained within the workday environment. So if you're talking about protection and the appropriateness of the information. Um, so it will look at the information in context of the action that it's performing. So for example, if somebody would say, well, what's my balance for my uh, annual leave? Or how much was I paid last time? It will give you the ability to specify the parameters. And then it will surface the information based on the request. Uh, and that information is all protected and security controlled. So if, for example, it's your own personal data and information, only be made available to you if you have the right secu security protocol in order to, to see that information. If it's information and you're a line manager, for example, it will determine who within your organization you have permission to see and will surface only that information. So that's, that's how we would control the efficacy and accuracy of the data. Does that answer your question? Thank you. There's a gentleman over there. Um, Hi. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, it's a simple question. You, the credentialing thing you're talking about. Um, I'm really sorry, but there's so much background noise. I'm struggling the, to. The credentialing um, tool you were just talking about, the blockchain? Yes. Is that going to be available t if I leave a workday customer and I go and I work somewhere else? Will yes. I be able to take that with me? Yes. OK. So like LinkedIn Plus, basically. Yes. It okay. will be personally available to you as an individual, and you can take it with you. It doesn't matter if you're not at a Workday customer. And you can add to it? Uh, well, it depends on the partnerships we have, but in principle, yes, they can be added to. So this is actually a different concept. It's not built into the Workday tenant. It's available from the App Store, and you would download it yourself. But what we would look to do is encourage Workday customers to encourage their employees to start uh, utilizing the wallet in order for that <laughs> sorry in order for that uh, that to grow because we've got access now to 44 million employees that could immediately take advantage of this availability but yeah you wouldn't need to be a workday customer to use it as a gentleman just two rows behind I think if, if you wouldn't mind just speaking very loudly as well because uh, where I'm standing on the stage is a lot of ambient noise and it's quite hard to hear the question oh I'm sorry yes sorry uh, is it on Okay. Hi, my name is Tuli Ramukulo. I'm from Unilever. Uh, just a question around the timelines for customers who already have Workday. When will all of this be available? So and then secondly, if you already have a system with a skills library, is it possible to link it to your skills cloud? So uh, I'll answer both questions separately. So uh, the skills cloud is available now. Um, and the suggestion on skills is, is, is available now. Things like the skills miner and also the... Um, uh, the skill signature, we're talking around 12 to 24 months for those to be rolled out. Things like the uh, business analytics piece that we talked about, we're with, live with certain customers now in early adoption, and that will ramp up over a period of time. The uh, Workday assistant will be alive uh, in the next few months. Uh, the people experience will come in uh, to play within the next 12 months, uh, but we already have people utilizing it today in uh, some parts of the population. I know Unilever is a very good partner, so I'm not, it could be that you'd be part of our early adoption program, but I'd need to check where we are for your business specifically. But for general availability, it's in that 12 to 24 month, uh, 12 to 18 month window uh, for those. So almost everything I've talked about, we will see in the product in a relatively short period of time. Um, and some of those will mature from that point onwards. On the Linking Skills Cloud, there is a mapping process. Um, we'd have to look specifically with, with, with what you're using now. We have a mapping process to look at uh, creating a link between current skills definitions to our, the Skills Cloud definitions. Uh, and we can explore that more directly with your organization, given our, through our customer success managers. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi, Russell. Um, just two quick questions. So at which level of organizations is it better implemented at a local entity level or a global level? Um, because global businesses have various existing systems around the world. Uh, how do you, uh, if in South Africa I want to impl implement Workday and there are other many global systems, what happens then? So, so c can you tell me which organization you're from? Buyers of. Okay, so typically what we see is that we engage 
uh, and we do have, we have organizations in medium enterprise, but they are self-contained organizations. We have big international organizations. For the most part, uh, we, with the big international organizations, we engage at that level, and we support through a very robust methodology the deployment of Workday, looking really to create uh, a, uh, a global capability but there may well be in the design, and that often is determined by the governance of individual companies on variations based on local requirements, so that you have a local, a local feel to a, a global deployment. But ordinarily, that's how our model would work, and uh, that, that tends to be how we would, uh, we would land in a local environment, um, if that makes sense, yeah. Okay. And any clients in South Africa that uses Workday? Do we have any clients? Yes. Inside we have uh, Chiliwe Ross is just there, for, who was speaking next door earlier on uh, from Old Mutual. Um, yeah, so. Sorry, I don't think anyone can hear you. Because, uh, just, uh, sorry, um, there are more than 300 companies that are using uh, Workday in South Africa, believe it or not. And these are the likes of Unilever that was mentioned. By the way, Avis globally is a customer. So there's the list is, is, there's a long list. And then there's local customers that are headquartered in South Africa that are also multinationals in their own right. Old Mutual being one of them, um, APSA Bank being another one, and there's, a, there's, there's more. Thank you, Zuko. So Zuko Mdawes, our, uh, our, uh, our director of South Africa. Uh, uh, we're running slightly out of time, so I can take um, maybe a couple more questions. We'll just take the last Sorry. one because we are out of time. So this is going to be the last question. Mark will stay around uh, to take any more questions um, if you've got questions for him. Yeah, I'll happily talk to you. Yeah. Any other outstanding questions? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, I have a similar question that he had. Um, can you also use this in government? So. So I think what I would suggest is that um, for any kind of conversations about uh, sector and so on, we've got uh, our, our team here that could speak directly about the opportunities that exist. Do you want to? Yes, of course, yeah. Yes, we do. We've got customers in uh, government. Um, in South Africa, however, we are not uh, covering government as yet, in South Africa specifically. However, globally, we do have government customers, globally. Thank you. So what I was going to say is we, uh, as we finish, we uh, have a workday stand just out there on the main exhibition area. Uh, we've got our uh, team of solution consultants that can actually show you the product there today. Please take the opportunity to go and talk to them. If you've got any specific questions about engaging locally, Zuko and his team would be more than happy to talk to you, uh, and we'd be very happy to see you at the stand. Thank you very much for being a very patient audience. Thank you.